Hi there everyone, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel. So tonight is going to be basically my only clear night of the week by the looks of things. Um, it's also landing on a moonless night which is good news for me because tonight I picked out a reflection nebula target and that is NGC 7023, the Iris Nebula. It's kind of a beautiful blue glow uh, of, a, of a bright young star that's illuminating lots of dust surrounding it. and. Uh, as you might expect, usually this sort of target requires pretty much pristine skies and uh, not the bottle seven skies that I'm going to be shooting from tonight. But nonetheless, I'm going to take this opportunity to shoot it uh, in broadband with my 2600 MC Pro and the Esprit 120 and just see what I can pull out from it in one single night of data. So stay tuned. So while I'm waiting now for it to get fully dark out here uh, and the last of these wispy little clouds to clear away, which they seem to be doing quite nicely, um, I thought I'd take a moment to talk to you about how I'm going to approach shooting the Iris Nebula tonight. Um, the problem with this target is it's quite a dynamic one, as in it's got a very bright core, but the rest of the nebula, the part that actually makes it so beautiful, uh, is the dust that it's encased in, and that is very faint indeed. Um, that's always going to pose challenges when shooting from a light polluted location like this, but um, me not really being a fan of taking multiple lengths of exposures and trying to combine them together after the fact, uh, I'm actually going to try and settle on the longest possible exposure that I can without overexposing the core of the nebula. Um, luckily for me, my 2600 MC Pro, the camera I'm going to be using tonight, has quite incredibly deep uh, full well capacity so that means I can shoot for a long time and not saturate the brighter parts of the nebula. I think my plan tonight is going to be to take 10 minute exposures, uh, indeed I'll take a look at it after the first exposure comes in and if it looks uh, promising great I'll just go ahead with that uh, and be confident that I'm getting the most out of uh, the night that I can uh, in that each individual exposure is just about as good as it can be I hope. Um, but if it looks wrong, I'll adjust and let you know and go from there. But yeah, fingers crossed, I think those 10 minute exposures, I can probably get away with them. We'll see. Well, it's dark enough out here to make a start now, I think. Um, the last time I used the Esprit uh, was actually to finish off shooting the Crescent Nebula, and that was using the L Extreme filter. Now, because I've changed filters tonight, uh, and of course the filter draw system and things like that, even though that should be the exact same distance, um, I'm gonna double check focus, since I've put the just the standard luminance filter back in, um, get that perfect, get polar aligned, um, take some fresh flats and then get myself plates off to the Iris Nebula and get started. Hopefully I'll be able to do all this before right around about half past ten comes around, it's about twenty past now. And um, yeah, with any luck I should be able to shoot then through till about half past three in the morning when it dawn really starts to break. Uh, that'd give me roughly five hours of exposure which isn't enough for this uh, <laughs> this target but certainly it's better than no exposure at all uh, so I'm going to be thankful for it either way. Well guys, that first 10 minute exposure came in uh, and I have to say it's looking really promising. Um, I'll just flip the camera around now and we can take a look at it together. 
So this is the full preview of the Iris Nebula 1 10 minute exposure at gain 100. Uh, and if I can just click on the core of it there, double click, I'll bring it up to a 1 to 1 preview size. Hopefully you can see on this screen recording that only really the central star is saturated and just hints of the nebula are visible around it. If you just click down here a moment and apply a small stretch to this image, um, you can see parts of the nebula began appearing right there. There's like a double um, wall, sort of like a fold appearance to it. Um, some of these dimmer stars are appearing very nice around it. If you just pop back out, you can see, uh, hopefully at home, you can see that it's kind of seems to be in a void of stars there's none around it and indeed leading off to the side here that appears to also be a trail where there's no stars now that's obviously not the case it just so happens that the stars are in the background when viewed from this perspective and the thick dust kind of uh, and in the iris nebula there um, is kind of blocking our vision of those stars so yeah i'd say these 10 minute exposures are looking really promising overall Well guys, we just hit about half past midnight. Uh, I thought it was time I'd give you a quick update and let you know just how the night's getting along. All the wind that was present earlier seems to have basically died down now. There's just a gentle breeze, which uh, would have no effect on my guiding at this so focal length. Uh, that's 860 millimeter with the Esprit. Uh, that's an odd one actually. It's marked as 840, but when your plates solve it, it actually turns out to be 860 with the flattener installed. Just a little bit of a tidbit of info for you there. Um, the sky has definitely gotten a lot darker now um, that we're actually into astronomical darkness. We don't get really get much of it at this time of year and indeed it's diminishing night by night how much of it I've actually got. But let's say my first exposure tonight I had a background ADU of 5,800 units. Um, the last exposure I just took was actually down at 3,600. So 2,200 ADU darker. Um, it's, really noticeable even on the uh, the little preview images in astrophotography tool so i think i'm capturing the best data of the night that i'm going to get now um i believe so far i've got nine nine or ten total exposures um i probably would have had another one on top of that but in the time that i've actually been shooting uh, i've performed two autofocuses now which take up a little bit of time each but Again, totally worth the time investment because really you only want to be capturing data if it's uh, you know as high quality as it can be and in focus. So again, that's no real loss, I would say. Um, things are looking good. Uh, I would expect that it's going to stay clear now until dawn, unless uh, <laughs> I've just jinxed it and we end up clouded out within 20 minutes. But now the, the weather forecast is looking all right. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I, uh, I should be able to get something decent from tonight. I know it's not going to be too much overall exposure length, but um, still, let's see if I can work some wonders with the Pixie Insight and uh, still bring something out of it. So, it's about 10 to 3 in the morning now, um, feeling pretty tired but I'm definitely uh, going to power on through and just keep going. Um, so far I've got 21 good exposures and probably with about 40 more minutes to go, so that's, you know, four more 10 minute exposures. Um, I'll be falling short of those uh, five hours that I initially predicted I might be able to get, but at least I know tonight where that time's gone. Uh, I've spent it basically focusing and things like that. Um, these are expected overheads and really I should have factored it in at the start, but you know, uh, <laughs> I just hoped for too much, I guess. Um, the sky conditions have, well, I, I would say they're taking a slight downturn uh, from where they were kind of in the middle of the night, around about uh, midnight or so, but it's still clear. Uh, it's not actually clouded up yet. And uh, the weather forecast is showing that it should stay clear at least until dawn. So. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to make every single minute count because I really think this target's going to need it. Um, I have absolutely no idea at all how this is going to turn out, so uh, it's going to be as much of a surprise to me as hopefully it will be to you. Um, but yeah, I'm still hopeful. Uh, this, this day it still looks good, even with the slightly murkier conditions now. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be out imaging, really. It's always enjoyable, so uh, I'm certainly not complaining. I don't want it to seem like that. <laughs> Well guys, it's about a quarter to four in the morning and that's the end of my night now. Um, I've had to stop imaging around about 20 minutes ago. I got 24 total exposures. Um, I did try for that 25th, 10 minute shot, but I don't know if you'll be able to tell. Uh, yeah, you can see there just behind me. Dawn's well and truly underway now. Um, at least I'll be able to see as I'm packing up, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, I think with that amount of data, um, I should be able to process uh, all that into something at least resembling the Iris Nebula. And um, as long as I'm able to share it with you all and you enjoy watching the story as it unfolded, and uh, then yeah, whatever it turns out like, that's a win in my books. Um, being able to share it with you all has been just such a pleasure and I'm really enjoying it and I want to keep doing it. So uh, thank you very, very much indeed for watching. I, uh, I really appreciate every single one of you. Um, Anyhow, until next time, uh, clear skies. <laughs>